Good news for Brexit Britain and bad news for EU rejoiners as the United Kingdom have officially beaten France when it comes to manufacturing. As the liberal media would say, hashtag despite Brexit. Oh, Project Fear. All the doom and gloomy updates have massively failed once again. We have a very confusing situation right now in our country because we have officially left the European Union as a member, but we are technically still tied to the European Union because of the EU laws, because of Northern Ireland still being part of the Single Market and Customs Union. We got the uh, European Court of Justice uh, still in charge. We got so much still linked to the EU. Like, we're not even talking about the EU army and all this other nonsense, but we are still surviving despite this chaotic and incompetent Tory government. So it's very impressive. It's the resilience of the British economy and British people. So what are we having? Look at these updates that we had recently. All the left wing and liberal media saying Brexit has damaged Britain's competitiveness and will make us poorer in the decade ahead. They've been saying this since 2016, by the way. The Brexit. It, this is the Guardian. EU suppliers worry about it doing business in the UK. Warn manufacturers. The trade body make UK uh, obviously add to pressure. This again came out a while ago. Then we had this. How has Brexit affected the UK manufacturing industry? Ah, oh, everything is coming down. Not only it's not coming down, we're actually going up. A tiny, tiny island. We are now beating the majority of the developed world when it comes to production. And it's absolutely impressive. The UK overtakes France as the eighth largest manufacturing nation, despite being a small island, despite, as the liberal media would say, Brexit, and despite the fact that we've moved on from industrial age in this country. And it's actually been quite bad because we already abandoned agriculture. That was a while ago. But we also abandoned uh, in the industry because of China and India. And we still relatively had America as an ally, but even they're losing to China. So a tiny island that's generally moved towards services as an industry, the UK, and obviously doing trade with the world. Wow. It's absolutely impressive that there are still hardworking people in this country who choose Britannia as the home for their business. So. The Meg UK, the manufacturing organization that were obviously uh, joining with the doom and, glo doom and gloomy updates, they've actually come out now to celebrate this update, saying, oh, this is surprising, let's celebrate. Now, what are the details? According to Meg UK, the actual organization, this is the data that we have from them. The latest global data places the UK eighth in the world rankings. Uh, separate data values the UK manufacturing output at 224 billion pounds in 2022 six of the top 10 export markets for the uk goods remain in the eu aerospace and transport sees largest growth in exports average salary in manufacturing almost 10 percent higher than the economy average northwest the biggest manufacturing region by output wales the highest share of manufacturing in the words of margaret thatcher Rejoice. <laughs> Rejoice at that news. And again, it's impressive. This is, despite all the chaos that we've seen in Westminster and changing leadership every two minutes and everything else with lockdown and, of course, all the other net zero policies, we are still fighting as a nation. We are still resilient. This is the map um, or the graph that we have when it comes to the top countries who are using Britain. This is basically the benefits of Britain when it comes to the United States. 56.7 billion pounds. The Netherlands, 37 billion pounds. Germany, 33.3 billion pounds. And so on. Even China, 27.6 billion pounds. We are doing well. They want us. They need us. And we have to be proud. We have to be patriotic. And we have to look after our country first before going out there in the world and pretend to be generous and virtuous. Anyway, separate data for 2022 from the ONS that places the UK manufacturing output is at 224 billion pounds. Now, if the government commits uh, to its calls uh, for a manufacturing target of 15% of GDP, then the sector could actually aim to match the seventh ranked Italy. So this is according to Make UK again. It's interesting. They say 
with many competitor nations having their own version of an industrial strategy, Make UK has also repeated its calls for a long-term modern and robust strategy which could help turn their 15% ambition into a reality. So we can do this if we avoid a couple of things. One, corrupt leadership. Two, high tax, high regulated economy. Three, net zero and globalist agenda. Stop doing that. Look after your country first, make yourself competitive, then go out there in the world, be internationalist and trade and sell to the world. We must sell more than we buy. Unless we are desperate for a product, we shouldn't buy from other places when we can make things here. That should be the mantra. But it's not right now easy because it's so expensive to do things in this country. Obviously things are changing, but hopefully we're changing it so we don't even have to get our clothes from abroad. Right now, unfortunately, we have to because it's cheaper, but maybe things could change. Those who uh, believed until a few years ago that the industrial age is completely over and we're never going to build anything in this country are wrong. They will continue to be wrong. We can build and we can at the same time also be modern and focus on services at the same time. Let me know your thoughts. I'm Maya Tusi and we are the media.